Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Sedona, Arizona. And the topic of the day is uh, we're going to talk about aloneness and loneliness. And what's the difference? We're going to do our meditation as always. So let's just close our eyes and bring our attention inwards and sink inside and get centered. Take a deep breath and just relax into being here. You may want to start by telling yourself how grateful you are that you're here. You're present, you're able to do this. And this, this simple thing is not taken away from you. And we have the ability of connecting with each other and being, being together in this way. So imagine if this was taken away from us. So we're very grateful for what we have. And we're not going to be focused on what we don't have. <coughs> Excuse me.
You're just sitting, you're relaxed, you're breathing normally. You have your eyes closed and your attention is inward. And you allow meditation to take over and do its thing. You're not forcing anything. You're not pushing it.
we're hanging out together, we're here, we're in this deep, relaxed state of meditation. We're not trying to get anywhere and do anything. We're simply practicing our natural state of being here. A forced meditation has no value. Meditation is something that happens naturally. It's a natural phenomenon. We all go to meditation during the day, a one way or the other, whether we have our eyes open and we're operating or we have our eyes closed and we're sitting somewhere. Meditation naturally happens. When meditation happens naturally and we don't force it, it takes us into a very deep state of relaxation and silence. And it gives us an opportunity to recognize our true nature. Our true nature is peace, and silence. So slowly, slowly come back. There is a power in the collective meditation and that by linking our hearts and our minds to the collective mind and collective heart. We activate and tap into a unified field of oneness, a unified field of energy. And we all become a part of that. And naturally, it makes it very easy for us to go into a deep silence. like what is happening right now. Once you enter into this deep state of silence, you kind of don't want to come out of it because it's so comfortable. Thank you. 
the reason silence feels so good and so peaceful is because it's your natural state. That's why when you're quiet and you dive into a deep state of silence, you naturally feel very good because you come back home to a natural state of yourself. Society keeps stimulating your mind to be activated. And the activation of the mind in an unnatural way creates all kinds of disturbances. And since we grew up with a very busy mind, and we're used to it, we don't really notice. We know something's wrong, something's disturbing, but we can't pinpoint it. So what we do is we're looking for peace and, and joy and serenity in the other world. We think we need to go on a vacation somewhere and basically <clears throat> finding somewhere peaceful, going by the ocean or mountains or the desert. And then we find a vacation place and we go there and peace comes back and we become very peaceful. So what a beautiful place, a, a nature place, let's say you go to Bahamas or you go to Caribbean, uh, what it does, it, it's simply reflecting back to you who you are. So it's reflecting back silence and peace to you. That's what it does when you go to a very beautiful, surreal place and you feel very, very peaceful, it's not that place that is peaceful. It's that place mirroring back to you who you are. Peace is within yourself. And now when we do meditation and we come together, the collective, as a collective, we're doing meditation. We tap into the unified field of silence, the unified field of love, the unified field of peace. And we go into this very deep state of silence and peace. And it feels really good. Can you see my face or it's too dark? You can or you cannot? Hilda? Yeah? Quite often the subject of the topic of loneliness and aloneness is being presented. <clears throat> There's a big difference between being alone and being lonely. The, then they're completely different from each other. Aloneness versus loneliness. Aloneness is more of a voluntary place that you choose to be alone for whatever reason that you have. Loneliness, it's completely different. Loneliness is more of a desperate place, desperation, and it's more related to a so, sort of a dysfunction 
or a disease or a sickness. So they're two completely different things. On the spiritual path, on this journey that we are on, <clears throat> you must have noticed that the more advanced you get, the more meditative you become, or the higher this mountain of spirituality that you're climbing, the deeper you go into your spirituality, the more work you do. And it doesn't matter how old you are and from what background you're coming from. If you pay attention, I want you to kind of look back in your life and look at it and see the changes that you can see from the time you started on this spiritual path to where you're at now, the deeper you go, the more you do the work, the more you're going to find yourself alone. The spiritual path going to the depth of your spirituality has a requirement that you become alone. And the higher you go, the less people are going to be around you. That's why many of you, whether I've spoken to you or I haven't spoken to you, but I'm 100% sure without a doubt. And again, I haven't examined and I haven't spoken to a lot of you personally to see what's going on in your life, but I have a pretty good idea that the more you're doing your spiritual practice, the less you want to hang out with a lot of people. You're, it's like going up this pyramid and the number of people you associate with is getting less and less. That's what happens. That's a part of being on the spiritual path. Because what happens is at the when you first started, I'm going to use this example. In the beginning of your spirituality, when you begin the path, is like to be at the base of the Himalaya. And at the base of Himalaya, there is hundreds of thousands of people who come to the base and some ha started a restaurant, some started a chai shop, they have a coffee shop, some are teaching yoga, some are sell selling equipments for climbing, they're selling shoes, they're selling um, ropes, they're selling tents, uh, there is a medical facility, there's all kinds of different things at the base that you find. Then you put a group of, let's say, 30 people who are determined to climb and go all the way to the peak of Himalaya. And the group begins their journey. And the first few days, you know, as they're climbing higher, let's say, let's say it takes 30 days, hypothetically, to get to the very top. I'm just, I've never done this, so I'm just using hypothetical numbers, so don't hold it against me later. But let's say the first week, this 30 people start climbing, and they're slowly starting to go, and then after, after four or five days or a week, they get to the first plateau, and... Uh, a few people out of the 30 may say, you know what, 
This is really nice here. It's green, it's lush, it's not too cold. And this is as far as I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna settle here and maybe open up a little coffee shop for the rest of the travelers as they're wanting to climb up there. They can stop here and get some, some chai. So a group of people just drop. Then you start climbing higher and the weather is getting tougher and there's blizzards, it's cold, it's raining, it's snowing, it's windy. So you keep climbing and then you get to a point that to another plateau and another group of people say, you know what, it's been great, I really enjoyed it, but I'm just gonna settle here and I don't, I don't feel like I need to continue any further. So another five, 10 people drop off. Then the core group keeps climbing, going higher to a higher plateau. Now the weather is frozen. It's zero or minus zero. Every step you're taking, it's really tough. It's painful. Your bones are hurting. Your body is hurting. You have to, some parts really climb. You need a rope and it's getting really tough. And you're getting to another plateau. And at that place, another group of people say, okay, this is as far as I can go. And I'm just gonna rest here or take it easy. I don't need to go any further. So by now you're starting to go climb higher and then you end up being like three or four people out of the 30, only three or four people left. So you keep going up and it gets tougher and tougher. The weather, you know, maybe drops under 10, 15 degrees. There's really cold wind coming. Um, it's snowing, it's pretty tough. And finally, let's say after 30 days of climbing, one person gets to the very top. And you, when you get to the very, very top, to the very peak, and you look around, there is nobody there. You're all by yourself. So at the very peak of consciousness, at the very, very height of consciousness, there's very little people you're going to meet. So in some way, yes, at the heights and the peaks of highest consciousness, it's very lonely. The higher you're traveling on the journey of, of your realization, the less people are going to be there with you. So, and you can see it right now, wherever, whatever level you're at right now, you have less friends than ever before. You know a lot of people, but there's very few people you can connect with. The more you become meditative, the more you're diving into inner silence, the more you're becoming aware and awake, the more you're expanding, the less people you have that you can connect with. But that's the path of being alone aloneness. The more you want to be by yourself, 
the more you want to be with like-minded people. If you go somewhere to a restaurant, the music is really loud and busy and disturbing. You can't stand it. You want to go somewhere peaceful. The same people you used to be hanging out with and having a great time, you can't really spend time with them for too long. They, they're disturbing you. You're naturally gravitated to a, to a more peaceful, quiet state. And you become more sensitive towards noise. When I say noise, I'm not necessarily talking about loud. I'm talking about people or places that they're operating from the mind. You may really enjoy loud music or going to a, a club or going to a festival and dance to loud music. It's not really loud, loudness. It's whether that sound is coming from mind or not. Mind Tolerating mind becomes a lot more difficult for you because you have learned the language of the heart and you're operating from the heart means you're operating from silence. So you're sensitive to, to the noise, to the mind. And the quality of people that you associate with changes. You may know a lot of people, but you can't spend time with them. You spend a little bit of time with some of them and they drive you crazy. And immediately you want to escape. But then you come across like-minded people, like our our group or you come to Ore in Sweden and you come across your brother sisters then you can just go blah 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 you can talk to each other forever because you're not talking from mind you're talking from the heart so you can talk to each other for a long time and spend time with each other and also you're spending time with people who understand silence, so you don't always have to speak. There are times that you talk about something, and then all of a sudden, you and your friend, or your three or four of you, all of you fall into silence and may hang out together for another half an hour and not say a word. And you don't feel like they they're draining you and you're losing your energy. But when I'm around people who are mindy and they're blah, 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 I start getting, feeling like tired, really tired. And I naturally feel like I want to pull away from them without even trying to or not want to listen to them or I started looking away. I don't even do it purposely. It just happens naturally. And I'm 100% sure you're experiencing that right now. So you get to a point that you prefer to be lonely to, to be alone, not lonely, I'm sorry, wrong word, to be alone or have the company of the wise. You begin to choose your company wisely. You are gravitated to the, the towards people who are lovers of silence. With them, you can spend time with and you don't feel tired but ultimately this is a path of 
the spiritual warrior. And at the end of the day, you're going to have to walk this path by yourself. I don't care if you're married, you're single, you're totally in love with your partner, whatever is your story, you have kids, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, at the end of the spiritual journey, you cannot walk this path with anybody else. You can walk it with your guru, but this is a journey that towards the end, you have to walk it by yourself. Same as death. When it comes to dying, at the end of the day, when you have to let go of the body and go into transition to the next level, to the next dimension, you can't take this with you. You have to let it go. And that's, you're going to have to do it by yourself. Nobody can accompany you. Doesn't matter how much money you have, how many people are around you, how many friends you have. It's one step of walking through this doorway that you have to do it by yourself. And that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it that at the end of the day, it's something you have to do by yourself. And that brings maturity because you get to that maturity that you take the jump on your own. And that jump, that step you take will bring tremendous amount of wisdom because it will graduate you to the next level. No one can hold your hand. Now, that's being alone, but loneliness is a different story. And we all have gone to this phase, this state, that you say to yourself that nobody understands me, nobody knows where I'm at, nobody knows what's happening with me. I feel so alone. I feel so lonely. We all have gone through this or if you haven't, you will go through it. I'm sure you all have gone through it that you feel so left out or lonely that no one understands you. Nobody knows what's going on inside you. <clears throat> and for those of us who are a little bit older, we have gone through the phases of our lives that you had your youth, you had your heydays, you had the party and the house and you were married, you had kids, you had a lot of people around you, everything was happening. And slowly, you know, you lost your partner, your partner died or left, or you went through divorce, your kids grew up and left, you're getting older, and now you come to your, become a single, you're living, you're being single, you don't really want to have a partner or you can't connect with another person, maybe you're living with your cat or dog. But years go by and throughout the years, you're just single.
And when you look at it now, after you get really used to being single, you can't imagine living with anyone. Because you really love your own space, the way you do things. Yeah, at times you feel lonely that, that you don't have anyone to share things with and you're really happy when your grandkids or kids or friends coming to visit you but you can't really live with anyone because you really love your own space that happens to a lot of us but let me tell you about loneliness loneliness is when you go in your mind and your mind is telling you that you're lonely, nobody loves you, you don't have anyone, life is cruel, you're left out, nobody gives a shit about you, nobody gives a damn, unless, you know, grandkids or whatever, but they want money, they don't care about you. Your mind will come with all kinds of excuses, stories of this that blah 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 but you can never be lonely i know it because i'm speaking from direct experience i'm not blah blah blahing a bunch of mumbo jumbo that i've read in some spiritual books i'm not telling you that I'm not handing you a, a, a bunch of bullshit. I'm handing you my direct experience of going into the phase of feeling lonely, feeling sorry for myself, feeling left out. I've gone through that phase and I know what it's like and I know it's ugly and it's desperate. And, it, and I needed to go through it because it brought me to this place of realizing that I'm never lonely. It doesn't exist. It's a state of the mind. The mind will come and create that, that you're lonely. You're never lonely. You're never lonely because the presence, Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, the presence of God, it's always here. Always here. Once you start to tap into that, once you begin to realize that presence is here once you learn meditation and you dive within yourself and you become quiet the moment you become quiet you feel the presence you feel her majesty the supreme being is here i want you to examine that for yourself and don't take my word for it challenge my word don't just accept what i'm saying try it for yourself when you feel lonely when you're alone and your mind will come and tell you you're lonely you're not pretty enough you're not wanted you're old or your friend betrayed you or nobody loves you and nobody cares about you and blah 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 or you catch yourself on the addiction of you always have to be busy and you always have to be around people you can catch yourself you always have to be talking to someone or you always have to speak or you're always trying to fill up the space fill it up so you don't have to face yourself you don't have to spend time by yourself by 
making yourself busy all the time by talking, yakking, or watching TV or listening to news or listening to something. Because that's the opposite side. Trying to escape, escaping yourself because you're so frightened to look at yourself. You're so frightened to face emptiness, to face aloneness. So it's either or. But right now I'm going to talk about loneliness. Your mind will come. I'll, I'll tell you a typical scenario of what happens for me. Okay? And you can see if you can relate to it or not. My mind comes and says, Zarathustra, you lost your youth, you lost your heydays. Remember, you used to live in Sedona, you had a big house and you had the party and lots of people wanted to be around you and you were a star and they were calling you and coming to you. And now you're living in a small cottage and you lost your fame, you lost your money, you lost your youth, you lost your zealous, and nobody wants to be with you. The mind will come and tell you these stories. And you start feeling lonely. And you start feeling sorry for yourself. And then you spiral down into this dark hole. So those are the moments you want to catch yourself because this is a game the mind plays, of course. You want to remind yourself and remember that you can never be lonely because when you are by yourself, and you sit in silence and you don't pay attention to your mind and you sink inside, you have a direct encounter of Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, the Beloved. And in that, if you be patient and keep doing it, you discover your soulmate, the biggest love of your life. It gives you an opportunity to have the most powerful love affair of your life ever over any other love affair you've had. That's love of God. And that happens when you're alone by yourself because you're giving it a chance. So when you think you're lonely, if you bypass your mind and be quiet, then you begin to feel the presence, the love. Besides that, there are so many angelic beings, so many godly beings from different realms that they're always surrounding you. They're all dancing around you. They're all playing around you. They talk to you. They give you messages. They may tell you jokes. You can never be lonely because there's a lot of beings around you. You're just not tuned into it to recognize and tap into them and communicate with them. Then, for example, if you're somewhere sitting in the nature, you can be lonely, there's birds singing, the whole nature is playing its thing. There's wind coming. 
There's all kinds of phenomena happening around you. You're not lonely. This loneliness is only a state of the mind. That's all it is. That can turn into a disease, but it's not real. Aloneness is a different story. That is a place us, lover of silence, choose to be there on our own. Because when you're alone, you recognize the power and you recognize the majesty, her majesty, and the angelic realm and how fulfilling it is. And at times, you're in such a deep communication with the spirit world that you don't want someone else around you. Somebody else will disturb that. So you prefer that. So is this making any sense? Anybody has a comment? Anybody wants to make some regular dance between him and the presence? I'm reading some of the somebody wants to have a question or make a comment, raise your hand or or just simply uh, unmute yourself. I do have some comments here on the chat box, but there's no question here. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Okay, Leslie, do you do you want to talk to me? Do you want to unmute yourself and we can talk? Um, just I see and and ex experience the truth of what you're saying, and I've been on both ends of the spectrum. I've been in that state of profound aloneness that is so full and empty all at once. Um, and I've also been on in the experience of deep loneliness and all the ways that you describe it. And I'm still not out of, I'm more and more leaning towards the aloneness, but I, you know, I'm still, because I just went through a huge process in my life of emptying out a lot of relationships, including my marital relationship. Uh -huh. um, and let him go find somebody that, you know, was more uh, compatible for what he was needing. Uh -huh. Rather than allowing myself to be punished for not being something that, like, I really you, just couldn't fit in. Can. Right, you can't and be. I can't be. And... Right. You know, and, and it was um, the willingness to, first of all, I was very attached. There was a deep soul relation connection. So it was like letting go of that person that I felt at, at that level of soulmate energy. Uh, I would say karmic soulmate, lots of lessons. <laughs> but we had our moments and, and I, I'm grateful to be in a place where um, both of us we're able to finally come to a place of just feeling the heart and the connection 
and to wish him happiness and I'm beginning to recover myself again and recover my own intimacy within. And I've yes. had very deep experiences of union within. And, yes. then, and then fell completely back into all of the spin of my uh, emotional trauma that I'm still processing in my life from you know deep trauma patterning that was still being held in the body. I am coming back out of a lot of that. And right. why I'm here right. for the last few weeks with you, your name kind of showed up in my field and it was like, hmm, you know, and I'm not really looking for teachers, you know, because I have my own connection within. And, um, but I have noticed that there's a few people that I have been able to allow to support me and you're one of them um, because you're not asking, first of all, that it be about you. And I like your honesty. And I love the simplicity of your methods and um, it helps me. I've been guided to a practice that's um, very much in alignment with how you're teaching from right. within. From within. Yes. It is the natural way and it is built into us. And, um, and I, I find your, um, your, your method for kind of allowing us to orient our minds towards that within ourselves is... Uh, is beautiful the simplicity of it and it's just not cluttered with a lot of other stuff so just thank you for that right. yeah you're welcome thank you're you. welcome thank you for um thank you for sharing i appreciate it yeah yeah, yeah. likewise yeah exactly okay. <laughs> simplicity it is that's it being simple and just going to the very, very basic and the truth of who we are and also the very, very simple things that, that we call them facts. Um, and one thing is here is we're just simply sharing uh, these basic things that we're all challenging, being challenged by and we're all going through. Uh, let me look, there is a couple more. Thank you for your clarity. Lynn or Margar Mar 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 Margareta or Lynn, do you wanna unmute uh, yourself if you wanna talk to me? We would love to hear what you have to say. Lynn? Yes, yeah? it's me. I'm here. Thank yeah, you hi. so much. Hi. Yeah, hi How are you? <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you so much for sharing the difference between lonely and alone. And uh, your simple message bring a lot of clarity. And I just want to say thank you that the path of my journey has been lonely, but I am grateful to have found a partner with me that okay. shared the same path and share the same journey with me. So I am quite okay. grateful that we all go on in this journey together and discovering the spirituality, the meditations, enjoying the simplicity of life and, uh, it's a beautiful thing. So we're actually here together listening to you. Okay. What, what's your partner's name? Tony. Oh, okay. hi. hi. Hi, Tony. Hi. Uh, yes, I want to echo what Jacqueline just said. I mean, I, I really, what you said about being loneliness and being alone, it just, you know, resonate with me so much because I just shared with her yesterday she asked me if I was ever lonely. I said, no, I could be alone, but I could not be lonely because if you barely understand the abundance of love all around and this perception of being lonely is only a perception because like you said, there's so many beings that love you. The state of mind. Your state of mind. There is so many spirit, your ancestor, you know, all the 
angels and spirits beings all around us is always watching over us and they always have us some mir miraculous way do their their thing that's you know i do believe that in my life many times i think the door is closed and miraculously something else open up so thank you so much for sharing i think what you have shared is very much from the heart and i really really appreciate Yes. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Tony. Yeah, thank I appreciate it, both of you. And you're always welcome to join us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So the for for me is like it's interesting. It took me years to re realize this. Of course, I had to go through different stages. Um and these different stages, it was, some parts of it was very painful and parts of it, I felt betrayed. Um, but I had to go through it because going through that brought me to become who I am and also made me the recognition and realizing the games that the mind plays on all of us in this area, especially in this area of feeling left out, feeling lonely. And then, so when I examined this and I went through it, I, I was forced to look at it and it's very painful. Uh, it could be a, it could be a very, very long period of time feeling sorry for myself and going through these stages. And then also coming to this place of also realizing that how much I also love being alone by myself. And it's, it's really great when you in your own life starts to examine this thing and find it for yourself. And each and every one has to do it. You're going to have to be really honest. In a way, you're going to have to be brutal, brutally honest with yourself to really look at it, to see if you're fooling yourself because the mind wants to do that, to keep you into the shadows, or you really seeing what's happening. And a part of that is, for me, was like, uh, I really love connecting. A part of me really needs to connect with other people. I need to have people around me. I need to touch. I need to talk. I need to connect, to exchange ideas, to dance, to laugh, to have fun. And all of this or teaching yet simultaneously you have this aspect of yourself that it has a great need of connecting with other people but simultaneously as you have this aspect you have this other aspect of yourself that loves to be alone Like a lot of times when I go hiking, I really love to be alone by myself. Or I drive in between Los Angeles and Sedona. I, I, I like long distance driving. That drive, most of the time, I don't want anybody to come with me. I have people telling me, hey, I wanna go to Sedona, can I come with you? And I'm like, I'm like, no, you know, I kind of nicely tell them I need to go by myself because I love that alone time of eight hours or nine hours of just being in a car by myself and take my time. I don't have to speak to anybody. I don't have to entertain anyone. I don't have to listen to anyone's stories. And I can stop as many times as I want in the middle of the desert. Like this time when I was coming halfway through, I pulled over and for about half an hour, I drove into this dirt road. 
which I have no idea where it's going. And you're in the middle of the desert. It's 30, 30 degrees, 35 degrees. If your car breaks down, most probably you will die because there's nobody there where you are. Nobody knows. And it's absolutely silent. It's still, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. It's 30 degrees, 32 degrees. It's quiet, quiet. No one's around and you're there by yourself. And you're either sitting in your car or you're just standing outside. But I don't feel alone for a moment. Lonely. I don't feel lonely for a moment. I feel so protected. So good. So much at home. And in such a deep meditation, the silence is so powerful that I know I'm home. I'm, I know I'm in some kind of heavenly realms in that moment with ascended masters or, or not, but I know I'm at home. So you, and I know each and every one of you, you have your moments that you're alone by yourself and you love it, whatever those moments are. So you want to examine it, you want to acknowledge it and recognize those moments that you're alone by yourself and you love it and you're in heaven and also recognizing the moments that the other part of you has a, a need for connecting with a like-minded like person or family or kids or lover or whatever. But if you go into this place that there's, a, there's an evening, there's an afternoon, whatever it is, and you start feeling lonely, loneliness, and feeling sorry for yourself, recognize that. Recognize that in that moment. That it's your mind that's gone into that place and is telling you you're lonely and nobody wants you and you're not good enough. It's an old pattern. And recognize it in that moment. And then you will see transformation takes place because that's a very unhealthy state. Coming to that feeling of being lonely and not being good enough and not being loved enough. And then the mind will come and tell you all kinds of story or you got too old, you're not pretty anymore. You don't have enough money. You don't have that body you used to have. You're not that person you used to be and nobody wants you. That's the story the mind is going to create for you. And if you can transcend that and go through that, you will come to a very deep state of silence and love will come back and you begin to feel because it doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, whether you're sitting with thousands of people in meditation, whether you're all by yourself, the presence, please pay attention, mark these words, the presence, her majesty, her holiness. The presence is always here, always. You are at the presence of her majesty, 
the supreme being at all the time at Please just don't deal with these with some words that you hear. I want you to really pay attention to this again. The presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, the Creator of the Universe, the Creator. Her presence is here with you. at all times she's your breath every breath you take is the breath of her your pulse your heart is beating it's because of her will your body's functioning your immune system's working your digestion your digestive system works you're able to breathe all of them is because of god ishvara yahweh krishna allah it's her majesty who is operating through you and you're functioning so it's the love of god so she, she is with you all the time that you're able to be alive so you must know that you're not lonely and recognize that it's the love of god that you are here so you cannot be worthy or you cannot not be love enough or be insignificant if god is operating through you there has to be a significance so remember that and feel it and all that sense of loneliness will disappear and gratitude will take over and the presence and the presence will reveal itself more and more the more you recognize her in your life the more she will she will reveal herself to you and the more your life be, becomes juicy literally every moment of your life becomes juicy that's the love affair i don't know if you ever read anything from rumi if you read from rumi all the poems that rumi wrote his her, his poetry was about his love affair with his guru but the guru represents god maybe next time if you remind me because i probably forget i can tell you about a couple of masters and their love affair with their guru and how they met their guru and how they were affected by the love of god when god revealed itself to them we're in an era that god is tacky the word god that god has been pushed aside that money and power and fame and possessions are most important things the presence god has is forgotten
And for some of us, in this special time, to remember this and to come back to this and to bring our attention to this place is the most important thing we can do in our lives. The more you recognize the presence of God in you, the more joyful and vibrant and juicy your life will become the more magic you begin to experience. Because God is the only thing it is, my brothers and sisters. There is nothing outside of God. Nothing. Nothing exists outside of the presence. If you don't like the word God, Change it with the word presence. Life is not worth living for even a moment if God wasn't in it. The love of God goes beyond everything, heals everything, sows everything up. And brings light in your life and shows you your path and bring purpose. And create such a powerful flame in your heart. That that power, that light and that flame will surpass any obstacles that appear on your way. You just stay in this place. You stay with the God. But you have to feel it. To feel it, you have to be quiet and come to this meditative place. Then you feel the presence. And the more you feel the presence, the more protected you feel. Fear disappears. You hear all these stories in the news, but you will not be afraid of anything. Because you feel it here. You have it here. And remember, this is the only reason you're here on this planet. All the other reasons, they're secondary. Okay. Can I say something? Yes, please. Okay. Um First of all, I want to thank you um, for making me aware of the presence in the room, which is uh, beyond the feeling of, you know, just pure presence, like like spirits or... Um, I, like, I, I grew up in an, as, as, how do you say, um, you know, not, not so religious, family so I, I I never I never thought I had any like 
vibes upped in odd feeling energies of any kind. Um, but lately, like, sometimes I get very overwhelmed, like, for instance, I was at a friend's place and she started talking about her now, like, her, her mother who died, and suddenly I got, like, lots of tears, like, without any reasons, just being very overwhelmed. And um, something similar happened today. I was listening to a podcast with a friend, Bouchard, and it's just, mm -hmm. you know, like on tape. And like, I don't have any connection with him, like seemingly, but suddenly, like, lots of tears like, came. Like, uh -huh. it, was, it was almost like it was standing there, you know, speaking in my ear. Um, so, um, yeah, it's like, in, in, in one way, it feels very good to feel connected to all those energies, and uh -huh. on the other hand, sometimes I also get very overwhelmed, like, and I'm, I'm just trying to notice, okay, lots of tears coming in, you know, very strong emotions. Uh, it's, okay. it's, not, it's not like I have any thoughts or drama. I, I used to think it was drama, actually. I used to think it was like traumatizing feelings. Right. And now it, it feels like it's, there's no drama. It just feels like I'm being overwhelmed with like very deep gratitude or it's just, yeah. it just pours yeah. at me and I'm like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> right. So I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, I'm just like, yeah. So are you asking me a question? You're, you're just sharing with me uh, how you feel. I'm, I'm mostly sharing, but I'm also a little bit asking a question as like, Am I staying in my presence or am I like suddenly being thrown back into like the emotional right. landscape, you know? I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's a part of the, your journey that the ap apparent world, the world that you're seeing, okay, this world, everything that is happening, it's designed to throw you off mm -hmm. it's gonna do its thing to throw you off of your center into the world of fear and worry and anxiety it pulls the plug from under your it pulls the rock from under your feet and all of a sudden you're off balance and something happens but when you recognize the truth so you bring your focus back again so no matter what happens what you see you always come back to the center especially now with all these stories those of you who were with me like two years ago three years ago i don't know if you remember hilde marit Monica, they were there and we were talking about the news then. And at one point, a couple of my academies, I started to say that things are going to get a lot more heated and a lot things are going to get worse in the apparent world. I don't know, Hilda, if you remember, I used to say that. And I kept saying, stay quiet and stay silent and ignore the noise on the other world stay in your center yes that's correct so in one way what you want to do is you want to use the stage of the world whatever is happening forget about everybody else look at it as this is a dance of creation specifically designed for your spiritual growth. The whole thing is happening for you. Ignore all the other people in the world and whatever is happening, look at it 
that this is the dance of creation to examine you whether you can stay in your center or not. And keep coming back to your center. Keep coming back to this place. Every time you come back to this place and you're quiet and you go in a deep state of silence, then there is no world and there is nothing happening. Everything becomes still. Everything goes to zero. Then when you come out of this place and you come back to the world and then the world is chaotic and it looks scary. But the other world that you're looking for has zero power, zero. It's nothing, nothing. I don't care what happens in the world. I don't care what kind of tsunami, what kind of disease, what kind of army, what kind of force appears, it has zero power when it comes to you in front of you. If you come back to your heart, it has zero power. Doesn't matter how huge it looks like. It doesn't matter how many million people around you are screaming from fear of the, of the boogeyman to come. If you come back to the center, all of it will fall apart. It has zero power because you are the master. The world will come and bow at your feet. It will come and kiss your feet. If you stay in your center. Excuse me. <clears throat> Just a comment. Uh huh. So, and the world, or you know, what it was, <laughs> out of things come to my feet, like energetically, they come to me, like I feel grace coming. Some sometimes it's like I, I, I can contain it, and that makes me um, maybe go back into thoughts or reactions, you know, instead of being like totally still. Um, like, like there's an overwhelm of emotions coming because uh, the, the, the judge is so like strong. Just keep doing the work you're doing and everything will become clear. It takes time. Yeah. It's going to take time. But always come back to the center, no matter what happens. Always come back to your center. Always dive back into inner silence. That's where your power is. That's where you recognize you're not insignificant and you're not small. Dive back into your center. Come back to this place. You come back to this place. You're still, you're quiet. You're not moving. You're not going anywhere. You're here and you're in your center and you're focused. It doesn't matter what flies around you. 
you just stay there and it builds up from that it's like the more you're still and in this place the more this energy field around you becomes stronger and more powerful the vortex around you it gets created around you but it requires you its requirement is the attention to go inside the more the attention goes inside the more become powerful this energy field around you it's it's an inside job you build it from within you ignore what is going on outside absolutely ignore what's happening on the outside don't put any attention on the other world especially now bring your attention inside build build your power from within by ignoring the other world the other world wants to drag you out and bring your attention because it wants to eat you it's want to chew you alive the world of thoughts the world of fear the world of anxiety the world of news it's not real let me put it this way it's maya it's illusion it's not real bring your attention to this place and discover what's real keep your attention on what is real and ignore everything else and then you will see you will discover your power and you will discover stillness and you will discover silence and you discover peace and love and since you have nothing to lose you can afford doing it cuz i'm not asking you to give me money to do it i'm not asking you to do anything for me i'm just making a suggestion do this and see whether it works or not if it doesn't work you can always go back to what you were doing it has no requirements and no investments so you have everything to gain and nothing to lose but you have to do it no one else can do it for you it is an alone path you have to walk that path on your own nobody can do it for you your guru your teacher can guide you but it can force you I checked our website actually I noticed that we put up three new um programs on the website they are completed we have a uh two uh new videos one is to how to feel touch and restore the auric field so now we have this uh video available um it's on my website under the products we also have another video about how to do distant healing and learn how to do that and um i recorded 11 episodes of 5d quantum awareness series uh talk series 
And so we completed the first episode and it's on my website now under the products. Uh, there's 10 more that I need to work on, but this one is there. This it's, it's pretty juicy. It's uh, six sections and it's ta talks about six different things. So um, you can take a look at it, see if you're, you're interested or not, but they're out there. Other than that, I will see you next week on Wednesday. I look forward to seeing you. Feel free to connecting with us. My email address is uh, info at zaratustra.tv. Uh, you have my Facebook pages. They're all Zaratustra 5D. And my podcast uh, is Zaratustra 5D. And my YouTube channel, same Zaratustra 5D. Uh, the recording, uh, hopefully, I don't know what the quality of this recording is coming out, uh, but we're going to be sending it to you. And you can also check it out on, on uh, my website as well as on the YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel. Nice seeing you all and I'll see you next week. God bless.